Welcome, it's Facts You Don't Know. If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts that will definitely make you smarter and more. Well, and for make sure to subscribe and active the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Frank Samworth was a gorgeous young man who came from a wealthy household. His height and excellent looks drew the attention of the ladies. And whenever there was a party to which he was invited, or whenever there was a ball, he was the first to arrive and the last to depart. Unless he persuaded a girl to accompany him, in that case he would take her to his room, give her money in the morning without looking at her twice, and order her to leave quickly so that no one would notice her presence. Frank was the man who was fun, flirtatious, and disloyal. He was a womanizer who was solely concerned with his own needs. He didn't give a damn if he crushed the hearts of women. He was under the impression that money could fix everything. He and his mother, Bianca Moore, lived in a mansion together. His mother was a sage of a woman in her 80s. She was full of life and everyone adored her. This was not the way the mother raised her kid. She'd raised him better than that and desired to see him become successful and well-respected man. Although she frequently chastised him and encouraged him to refrain from squandering his money on ladies, parties, and automobiles, he did not heed her advice. But mom, what are you doing? I'm still quite youthful and attractive. I don't want to spend my time sitting behind a desk at work, Frank shared his thoughts. I also don't want to be tied down by a lady and children. It would be a dull existence. I'm looking for adventure, excitement, and pleasure. I want to be able to have everything and everything I desire, and I have the financial means to do so. The spoiled brat responded in kind. You've grown up, my lovely kid, and you're a responsible adult. You must behave responsibly. You may still have a good time in your life, but you're squandering your money left and right, and you're acting in a careless manner. Also, I'm concerned that you'll come to regret your actions at some point in the future. Ask your mother, she said. Dear mother, you're overthinking everything. Frank kissed his mom on the cheek before heading out to a party with his peers. The mother was heartbroken for her son. His so-called pals weren't really friends. They were only with him for his money, and they would abandon him if he got himself into problems with the law. They didn't have any strong links that would help keep them together in a friendship of any kind. The home Frank and his mother resided in was large and filled with art crafts of all kinds, including paintings, statues, chandeliers, and other similar items. It required a great deal of attention and effort. The primary maid was becoming elderly and couldn't keep up with all the work and the other maid resigned since her husband had to relocate to the city for his new job, which required her to quit. Because of this, the mansion was understaffed. As a result, Bianca instructed her son to place an advertisement for a housemaid. Frank thought that this was a fantastic opportunity to have some fun. He stated in the advertising that they were only looking for young maids between the ages of 20 and 25 because they were inexperienced and simple to train. He was correct. Truth be told, he had a soft spot for young women, and he thought they were easy to manipulate. His own interviews had been done with the maids prior to their arrival for the evaluation. He didn't consider things like experience or skill in household tasks or taking care of his elderly mother's health. Instead, he was just concerned with finding the cutest and youngest female possible to gaze at in the mirror every morning at night. He wanted someone who was both beautiful and innocent, which would make it easier for him to persuade her to become his wife. Carla was the woman he picked. She was 22 years old and quite attractive. He considered her to be one of the most attractive women he'd ever encountered. She was a tall, doll-like woman with chocolate brown wavy hair that cascaded over her shoulders and a smile that said, I love you. In addition, there's an angel's face. Carla was a favorite of his mother's since she was kind and diligent. Carla took the job joyfully after learning from Frank's mother that her family was impoverished and her father was ill, and she did it in order to assist her father. Frank made the decision to take action of the situation. He began flirting with Carla and implying that he liked her. He harassed her and attempted to pass it off as a joke, or he pretended that it was Carla's fault since she was so attractive that he couldn't resist. Carla would get frightened and unsure of what to do. As a result, she allowed it to happen. She was afraid that if she said anything, she'd be disbelieved and labeled a liar, or worse, she'd be dismissed. Keeping her mouth shut and tolerating Frank was necessary for the money to aid her impoverished family. One day when she was cleaning Frank's room, he sneaked inside the room and shut the door behind him, completely oblivious to her presence. Then she turned around, shocked and wanted to escape, but she couldn't get away. Frank slammed her against the bed with force. Never waste your time shouting because no one would hear you. There are just two of us in the home, you and I, Frank burst out laughing. 
Please let me out, Carlo let out a yell. And why would I do something like that? In this mansion, I'm free to do whatever I want and obtain what I want. Please remain silent and follow my instructions properly, or else I'll make you pay for your indiscretions, Frank issued a warning. It was him who took advantage of Carla's naivete and used it to satisfy his needs. It didn't matter to him if he caused harm to others as long as he got his hands on anything he desired. Carla's heart had been torn apart. She grew depressed and less animated, and she ceased to speak or laugh often. Bianca saw this and inquired as to if anything was wrong, but the maid said that nothing was wrong and she was simply feeling under the weather. Frank was pleased with himself and proceeded to harass Carla. Carla was aware that she was expecting a child. She went to the doctor because she was feeling really ill and vomiting a lot. She was informed by the doctor that she was expecting twins. Carla was in a bad mood. When she informed Frank of this, he became quite alarmed. He denied that it was his children and accused Carla of giving them a bad name. He said that she was chasing his money and that she was a liar. Carla begged him to kindly hold off on firing the hiring until her belly began to show signs of life. His mother was in Paris visiting her sister, and she planned to stay there for the entire summer. Carla gave birth to twins, and Frank took advantage of the situation to get rid of Carla and the babies as quickly as possible. He made the decision that when Carla gave birth, he would poison her and choke the kids in the night. When Frank woke up in the middle of the night, he walked to Carla's room on tiptoes. He'd hidden a powerful hypnotic medication in her food and drink without her knowledge, and she would be deep asleep as he carried out his plan to rid the world of her and her children. Frank opened the door quietly, but to his astonishment, the room was completely empty when he entered. Carla and the twins had vanished without a trace. Frank was completely out of his mind at first. Then, after two weeks had gone and Carla had failed to appear, he was relieved that he'd been able to get rid of her without getting his hands dirty. He said to himself, good riddance. After a few days, Frank was back to his old, crazed way of thinking and acting. And while he was having a good time, Carla was hatching a plan to get revenge on him. According to popular belief, revenge is a dish that is best served cold. Carla was stringing it gently as well. She went to the doctor, who was related to the Franks. During their conversation, she shared her experience with Frank, how he had gotten her pregnant and threatened her not to tell anybody, how she had overheard him talking on the phone with a buddy about how he intended to poison her and kill her babies, which were actually his own children. She informed the doctor that if he didn't believe her, he should get a DNA test done. The doctor stated that there was no need for it because he had faith in her story. Frank was well known to him, and he was well aware of what a horrible person he was. She devised a scheme with the doctor in order to extract revenge on Frank. When Frank came in for his once-a-month checkup, the family's doctor appeared to be in a bad mood, and he said that he wanted to collect blood from Frank for testing because he had a suspicion about something. When the findings were received, the doctors contacted Frank to inform him that the situation did not appear to be promising. Frank was suffering from a terrible condition that needed to be treated as soon as possible, or else he'd be crippled for the rest of his life. He informed Frank that he needed a bone marrow donation as soon as possible, and that it was difficult to locate someone who had compatibility issues with his own. Frank instructed him to place advertising for contributors, and he promised to give them whatever amount they desired. After a few days, the doctor contacted Frank to inform him that he had located acceptable donors. Frank was taken aback and rendered speechless when he realized that the donors were Carla and the twins. Carla was adamant about not donating any of her children's marrow. She and the doctor went ahead with the plan as they had planned. She protested and the doctor tried to persuade her otherwise. I'm sorry I couldn't persuade her, but I couldn't, according to the doctor. You'll be unable to walk if we do not do the operation and transplant as soon as possible. Frank, you should speak with her. As a result, Frank approached Carla with a forlorn expression on his face, telling her that he was truly sorry and that he was prepared to atone for his actions. She informed him that she would not allow the donation unless he married her and acknowledged the children as his. She also requested that he purchase her house and register the company in her name, and then divorce her because she could not live with a mean, despicable man like him. He refused to comply. Frank was forced to accept the situation. After getting revenge on him, Carla kept the fact that it was all a game to her from him a secret. She also ensured the future of herself and her children. Frank, who had lost the majority of his money as a result of his reckless lifestyle, would hopefully learn his lesson. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.